Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Brutal Foods. My name is Ian, and it's time I let you guys know about my crippling addiction to jars. Over the past few years, I have amassed a large collection of jars. Uh, there's jars in the bedroom, jars in the living room, so many jars that I just don't know what to do with all these empty jars. So it's pretty great that while thrifting the other day, I came across this book, Desserts in Jars. This is a cookbook by Shaina Olmanson, uh, and it's all about desserts that you can make in jars. This seems like a great way to make use of these jars and also maybe unload them on some friends by, you know, giving them a dessert in a jar. Hey, just take it home, take it out of here. I don't, I don't need it. I gotta say, uh, some of these pictures on the back of the book uh, don't really look like the desserts were made in the jar. Uh, this bottom one here looks like she just you know, made a cupcake and then put it in a jar, which, I mean, that kind of seems like cheating to me. I'm really excited, so let's get started making peanut butter cup cupcakes. Some things are meant to go together, and peanut butter and chocolate have long been a combination worth marrying over and over again. Children and adults both will enjoy this dessert. The kids are likely to squeal when they find the creamy peanut butter surprise hidden beneath a layer of chocolate and tucked inside its soft devil's food cake. I'm gonna make your kids squeal when they find my peanut butter surprise. Unlike the picture on the back, uh, this one definitely looks like it was made in the jar. Uh, you can see that it's got a nice hard uh, oh. chocolate coating on top uh, that looks really tasty and I mean, it's chocolate and peanut butter. I mean, it's one of the best flavor combinations ever. Maybe, probably, maybe. To make these peanut butter cupcakes, we are going to need granulated sugar, all-purpose flour, Dutch process cocoa powder. Uh, this one has a guy on it. I'm pretty excited that guy looks pretty trustworthy to me. Baking powder, baking soda. Uh, I actually didn't know there was a difference between baking powder and baking soda. I almost only just got baking soda, but I got that powder, so we're good. Salt, two large eggs, vegetable oil, uh, I got a huge one, buttermilk, vanilla extract, and it calls for hot coffee or boiling water. I'm gonna go with coffee, because I love coffee. I especially love my boy Folgers. Now this is what you're gonna need to make the cupcakes. Uh, there's a second half of it, which is the peanut butter filling, I will go over those ingredients when we get there. So there are a lot of ingredients here. It is a little bit daunting to me, especially since this is just part one, but it shouldn't be that bad. I wanna say that we're probably just gonna be mixing everything up and then sticking it in a jar. I can do that. Okay, now that we've got everything laid out, let's get started. Step one, make the cupcakes. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Uh, in a large bowl, sift together the granulated sugar, flour, cocoa, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. Oh, yeah, I should say, uh, while it's on my mind, this recipe makes 12 cupcakes, which means if you're going to follow along, you're going to need 12 jars to make this in. All right, so I've actually got some new bowls I'm gonna be using today, which is pretty exciting. I'm gonna use this nice big blue one. I've also got a new whisk and some new measuring cups, so it's it's an exciting day. What's the point of having the twisty ties and the zip ties, man? What's the point? So granulated sugar. I need one and a half, one and a half cups granulated sugar. That is a lot of sugar. One, one and a half. Uh, we need two cups of all-purpose flour. The flour does come with this nice little hint right here. Cook before sneaking a taste. Flour is raw. Please cook fully before enjoying. How do you open one of these things? Is this the bottom? Am I opening the bottom? A half, a cup, a cup and a half, two cups. And I'm a mess. Cocoa, premium cocoa with mustache man. Mustache man. Oh man, that smells awesome. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths. I do wonder what the difference between baking soda and baking powder is. Oh, it comes in a can. 
teaspoon is smaller than tablespoon, right? If there's one thing you're supposed to do uh, while baking, it's guessing with measurements. Always guess with your measurements. Never look anything up. One and a half teaspoons baking soda. How do you open this? That doesn't look right. One teaspoon. One half teaspoon. A half, a half a teaspoon of salt. So it's a good thing that I got this a big old thing of salt, just in case. Just in case. You never know when you might need a big old thing of salt. Uh, you might as well get the whole thing. <laughs> so to recap, we put the granulated sugar, flour, cocoa, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. And we're gonna mix it on up. I must say, it's looking quite cocoa-y, uh, which I am in favor of. In a separate bowl, beat together the eggs, oil, buttermilk. Oh man, that looks cool. I guess because of the oil, the buttermilk doesn't fully spread out and it looks so awesome. Vanilla. I can, do that. can I open it? I can't get a I can't get a grip. Okay, hold on. Yeah. I'm gonna beat it together. Mix the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. Whisk in the hot coffee. Okay. Uh, we gotta we gotta make the coffee. Mix the wet and dry ingredients. I wasn't supposed to use a, a whisk for this. I have a feeling that mixing something in and whisking something in are probably two different things. Oh yeah, that's looking a lot better. This almost looks like I could eat it now. Okay, now it says whisk in hot coffee until, or just until incorporated. Just until incorporated? I don't know what that means. It's very hot. One. Man, I'm dripping a little. Uh... Awesome mug. Maybe not the best for uh, accurate pouring. I look a lot more diarrhea-y now. Surely that's, surely that's incorporated, right? In a separate bowl, I've got bowl number three here. We are going to need creamy peanut butter and confectioner's sugar. And that's it. That's how you make the filling. The filling is just peanut butter and sugar, which I'm into. Three fourth a cup creamy peanut butter. Is there an easier way to do this? Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, and we also need one and a half cups confectioner's sugar. This seems like a lot of sugar. Uh, this seems like maybe too much sugar, one and a half cups. All right, so now we're mixing together uh, the, the peanut butter and the sugar. Oh, shh. Oh, bah. It's not getting smooth, it's getting like, turning into little pellets. I'm, go I'm gonna try the whisk. It looks like gravel or like Dippin' Dots or something. Like, look at this. That doesn't look smooth to me. Is this why people have electronic mixers? Okay, so it's not smooth, but I don't know what else to do with it. Uh, it's just kind of staying this weird crumbly uh, shape. Roll into 12 balls, one to two inches in diameter. I mean, they're kind of coming together. It's a little weird. They're kind of crumbly, but 
And that's a ball. Now, if I was really smart, I could make this a cooking and educational show. Count how many, uh, count how many peanut butter balls there are all, are there are, are all children. Maybe I could not do that. All right, so there we go. There's 12 peanut butter balls of varying size. Um, but I guess I got the measurements right because I used all of this. Uh, there's really no... I'm, I'm scraping the bottle of the, uh, the bowl here. So these are what mine look like. Uh, yours might look a bit different. Uh, they might look a bit better. Uh, but mine look like dry, crumbly, uh, little, little crumbly peanut butter balls. Now for the fun part. We've got our jars. Scoop three and a half tablespoons of cupcake batter into the bottom of each jar. Got a, I've got a knife here to help scoop it out. I feel like there should be an easier way to do this. Uh oh, uh oh. That was way too much, holy crap. I need to go back to the measuring spoons. This isn't going well. But right now I'm just trying to get some of this in the jar because I don't want to be here all day. So now we get to plop, get to plop some balls in the jar. Plop, 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 plop. There's our peanut butter surprise. Our surprise for the children. So now we cover the peanut butter balls with the remaining chocolate batter. Wipe up any batter from the outside of the jar or around the rim. That should be fun. I guess I'm just gonna go one by one. Do you think it means in the thing too? Should I be? That didn't, no. Uh, so the jars are done. I don't know that this is exactly what they're supposed to look like. I've got a feeling uh, that they're not supposed to be so drippy on the inside, uh, but you know what? It's my first try. And you know, you're not gonna get perfection on your first try uh, unless, you know, you do. Place the jars two inches apart on a large baking sheet. Bake the cupcakes for 18 to 20 minutes until the top spring back when touched. Oh, it's heavy. How am I gonna get it out? Okay, so they're in the oven uh, for 18 to 20 minutes, but we can't rest just yet. We need to prepare the chocolate for the top. So our final ingredient is uh, dark chocolate, cut or broken into... Dark chocolate, cut or broken into 12 pieces, roughly equal in size. Uh, I got this fancy looking Scharfenberger uh, chocolate. That is one big ass chunk of chocolate, man. So this says it's sorted into five two ounce pieces. How are you supposed to? Ah. God. You got. There has to be a better way to do this. This cannot be the right way. So I've got 12 half ounce pieces of chocolate. I'll be honest, they look a little thick. Uh, I was expecting them to be thinner, uh, but this is what the recipe says to do, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so what's gonna happen is these are gonna get finished from the oven. You're gonna immediately remove it from the oven and put a chocolate piece in every single jar. And then you're gonna carefully tilt the jar so it uh, melts around the surface of the cake evenly. Definitely use gloves to protect your hands. I'm just gonna try and keep that in my mind because I feel like it needs to happen fast. Open the oven, pull it out, set it down. Chocolate, 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 chocolate. Tilt those things around and then I'm done. Okay, so my timer just went off for 18 minutes. I gotta admit, it didn't feel like 18 minutes. My baking instincts say, it's not done. Uh, but my instincts also, I don't know anything. 
I did tap the top of the cupcake a little bit and uh, it bounced back. So I guess that's, I guess they're done enough. Very scared, very scared. Oh boy. Well, these things came right up, didn't they? This is gonna be Plop. way too much chocolate. This is too much chocolate. Plop. Did I do my math wrong? I could have sworn that I cut them up. Maybe they were supposed to be half that size. Some of this chocolate is just disappearing into the cake. Oh my God. So here's the situation. Uh, some of these got kind of covered, uh, but some of them, the chocolate just kind of disappeared into the middle uh, of the cake, like that one there and that one there. We're going with Ian's baking instinct, not a part of the actual cookbook. I'm gonna throw these back in the oven just, just until I see this chocolate melt a bit more. I may not even close the door. I really just think that chocolate needs to be melted a bit more. I can't escape the feeling uh, that I've done something incorrectly. If one of those bars was two ounce pieces, you cut it in half, that's a one ounce piece. You cut it in half again, that's half an ounce. But the structural integrity of these cupcakes, some of these chunks were just so heavy that they just fell right through. And it's not gonna look like uh, how perfect it is on the cover of this one. It's just, it's just not. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna wait for them to cool and then uh, we'll dig in and see how they taste. Not quite sure how long I'm gonna have to wait, but for you guys, it's only gonna take a couple of seconds. All right, everybody, it's been a little while. Uh, let's check out our, our cupcake uh, jar cakes. Let's check out our cakes. So here we have our peanut butter and chocolate jar cakes. Uh, I don't think they're completely done cooling, if I'm being honest. So I'm gonna take the best looking one, which I think is this one here, and I'm gonna let it cool a bit more, and then I'll be back. Not quite done yet. All right, so I've sealed off uh, the remaining jars, but they still don't quite look uh, special enough. It just kind of looks uh, like we, I don't know, pooped in a jar. Plop. Uh, so I'm gonna decorate these jars with washi tape real quick. I mean, it's not gonna make a difference how it tastes or anything, but I mean, presentation wise, we wanna get points for presentation here. I mean, every time you cook, it's a competition. And presentation matters. Washy, washy, somebody wash me. All right, so there we go. There is uh, the fully decorated jars. Uh, I'm not sure on the washi tape. A lot of these are coming up at the ends. I don't know if they would really last long enough for you to even, even uh, give them to anybody. Uh, maybe instead you could tie a nice rustic string around it. Uh, it's in a jar, so a nice string. All right, the time is now. I can wait no longer. It's still not, uh, I still don't have that hard uh, chocolate coating on top, but I can't wait anymore. I got, I got stuff I gotta do. It's not, it's just not quite set yet. So I'm gonna try and get all the way down there into the peanut butter. Ooh, ooh, I definitely got some peanut butter in there. You guys see that? Nope. Nope. Oh. oh my God. That is rich. Very chocolatey, very peanut buttery. Very, very rich. That was much too big of a bite that I took just then. You can see in there, I got all the way in there to some peanut butter. Super rich. I think if that chocolate coating forms over it, that'd be pretty awesome. Oh yeah. Mm. Holy crap. It just feels very dense, not in a bad way. A little shot in there. Oh my God, that is freaking tasty. Not even half of the way through, and I've already gone through a full glass of milk. So hopefully that conveys um, how rich this is. Maybe it just conveys how much I like milk, because I do like milk a lot, but it's a very good combination. It's a lot more manageable once I get past that top melted chocolate. I think once it hardens up on the top of these, it's not gonna be so 
aggressively rich. But now that I'm just into the cake and the, uh, the peanut butter, it's not quite as rich. Very good. I think I like it a little bit better not being so rich though. Am I saying rich enough? So I'd rate this as a, a huge success. Uh, this is very tasty, and I'd imagine that it would only get better uh, as the shell on top hardens. In fact, let's go now and talk to future Ian and see how he likes it now that the chocolate on top uh, has hardened and he's gotten to try it uh, in its complete form. How's it going over there, Ian? Man, these cupcake jar cakes are really good. Definitely put them in the fridge and let the chocolate coating harden up. It's way better that way. Uh, then you can eat them cold if you want, but I've been letting them sit out and get closer to room temperature before enjoying. 20 out of 10 recipe, I'll definitely make them again. Wow, that's awesome. I can't believe that I'll definitely make them again. And that's all I got for you guys today. This was a fun one and we made something really tasty. I hope you guys uh, enjoy it if you decide to make it yourselves. And uh, if you're interested, check out Desserts in Jars. I have a feeling I'm gonna try out uh, some more of these. They seem like really great things to bring to a party or something because they're all individual, you know, everyone can have one, easy to transport and easy to clean. You just wash out the uh, jar. Jar, I forgot what a jar was called uh, for a second there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, but before you go, there is uh, something that uh, is, is going to happen. That's the best way to describe it. I need to shave. I need to shave. I need to shave. If you need to shave, then why not try Dollar Shave Club and get your razor blade, shaving gear, and more delivered right to your door. No more running out of fresh blades right when you need them, and no more going to the store to buy razor blades and they're in that stupid plastic box and then you have to talk to someone to open it and you hate talking to people. No more of that. But why stop there? Dollar Shave Club sells much more than just razors. In fact, for a limited time, new members can get their shit shower shave starter set for only $5. That's what it's actually called. It comes with a premium weighty handle, a full set of razor cartridges, and three trial size versions of their shave butter, body wash, and one wipe Charlie's butt wipes. Thanks to Dollar Shave Club, my butt is so clean, it's insane. After your first box, replacement razor cartridges are delivered for only a few bucks a month. So don't miss this deal. It's exclusively available at dollarshaveclub.com slash brutal moose. Sign up now and in no time you'll be saying, I'm shaving my face, washing my body, and my butt is just so clean. Thanks to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video.